I still have so many emails to reply. Are we live yet? All right. I think these mics are falling off, bro. It's gonna have to work. How's everybody doing today? <clears throat> That's my name, Rodrigo Pacheco. There's a different guy. Different guy. Oh, what's up, bro? We have the same name. Yeah, it looks better like that. Did you still the live on this one here? What's up? Did you still the live on this one? Yes. Okay. So what's going on, guys? Hi from Portugal. What's up, buddy? Who's that? Andre. Humble Grumble from the UK. How you doing, buddy? So right now we are started actually on time this time. Amazing. Whenever it started on time. But I'm waiting for Faye Jai to come. Uh, he's doing some water changes over there. If you have any questions, I'm here. We actually got a bunch of stuff that we can talk about it today. Um, we started doing plans on the exhibit. I think it came out really nice. We're going to put them up on the screen a little bit to start showing you guys some of the plans that we have for the future. But yo, that, that, it's very light now, John. What's the next golden fish? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I think we're probably going to take a second on the um, golden golden tank and uh, start working on the exhibit. So then we can have the entire exhibit ready before we can start getting platinum and golden fish. I have no chair. Oh, no, bro. Fijai has no chair. Today? I, I figure you bring your chair with you. You see how he is, bro? He opened a door and started complaining. <laughs> I don't know who took his chair, though. A golden Jardini. Man, that 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 would look awesome. I, I believe we had one before. A small one, and he sold it for a lot of money. Yeah, those are really rare. Australia in the house. Julie Connor. Julie, do you know any of uh, fish exporters out, out of Australia? I'm looking for some. You know fish guy? Um, no, not Yo, really. Your mic is just like sagging like me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it. You said it. Where's all the chicken nuggets in the house? Not today. Not today. Oh, you can see everybody putting on YouTube. So, Fijai, you want to give him the up? good news? There's so much good news going on this week. Wow. Wow, look at you. Yeah, well, more good news means you work even faster and then I have to play catch up. <laughs> yes. So, tell him about the good news. Uh, okay. Power is done. Power is done. One. Okay. So, we're ready to start adding more tanks. Right? That's one. Okay. Two, um, what's two? What's two? What's two? I'm a second uh, dad. Where? Again. Okay, yeah. Well, that that should that that, that, that should have been the first. But I'm yeah. thinking business. I'm not thinking family. Okay. So Ryan got a, a, a brother that uh, was actually born on the fourth. So now we have extra uh, help here in a few years that we don't have to pay for. Yeah. Okay. Um, next is we're making progress with the town. Yes. Okay, so Actually, uh, we, we have a we, meeting with the lawyer tomorrow. They're gonna call us around two o'clock. Two. Just, I'm letting you know now because you know I forget that stuff. Okay, two, 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 two should be okay. <clears throat> um, what's next? Well, right that? now, okay. So right now, we we can start building the store and the exhibit, right? But we have to run the power first to different outlets. 
Okay, well, now we can start taking steps. Okay, so we're going to um, insulate. We've got to figure out the insulation and figure out the power. Uh, in other words, laying out where we want all the power to go. And then after that, while, or concurrently while that's going on, we're going to start having to think about how we want to lay out the exhibit and get those things in motion so that um, things can work simultaneously, right? So we don't lose time, right? right. Um, we want to at least get something going bef by end of summer, late spring, I mean, well, late fall. Hopefully we can be open for you guys <clears> to be able to come here and, and, and purchase um, and visit the shop. And then as we're open, we can start working on the exhibit. We have a few people already that stopped by and we're discussing different options, different ways to go about it. We definitely want to do something different. Right. I don't want to we don't want to do this to be just like a regular place to stop by. We actually got a new member in the house. New member. Yeah. Welcome. That's how I am, uh, get wrecked. <laughs> welcome to Monster <laughs> Fan. Well, welcome. Thank you very much for becoming a member. Thanks so much for the Fahaka Puffer. She's too cute. Oh, you're welcome. Hopefully you enjoy her. D um, uh, Danny Phantom, live number one, asking for Birch. Uh, Bitchers. What? Huh? Well, I'm confused because there, there's a lot more going on this screen today. So it it looks like we're looking at comments from different different streams at the same time. Is that what we're looking at? Yep. So if you see something like this. It's okay. So so the one on the right is you, that red is YouTube. Okay. Yep. And the blue, obviously, that's Twitter, Facebook right? And Twitter. Yep. Okay, okay. So. <clears throat> asking for for bitchers. Is that the guy that comments on every video? I already told you, we have some. That's what we have. <laughs> this guy comments on every single video one, asking for vices. Video two, oh, comment two, asking every video he posts one. Okay. So Is that we the have, guy that called today too? Mo most likely, yes. Okay. So we have Wixie and La Prade in stock. Yes, that's it for now. Yes. But when we get more, you'll find out because it seems like you're always there. <laughs> so you'll see them come in. Um. Congrats on the new baby. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're, uh, so far, we name him Luke. So be Ryan and Luke. He's not blonde like Ryan. He's more brunette like me. So at least I will look like somebody in my family, which is good. Um, but we actually had someone design some of the exhibit parts that we want to go over and show you guys and see what you think. Because we're definitely going to need help. To get this exhibit going. In, in the moment it's ready, we can start doing really nice stuff, including rescue more fish to be able to house them. Because right now we, we can house anything. I actually had a lady uh, in, in the Bronx, I think, asking us to go help uh, pick up um, giant albino gourami. But I don't, I don't have tank space right now to keep anything. So getting that ready would definitely help us get to what we need to get and uh, start moving forward. But whenever John's ready, we're going to start talking about the, uh, what do you call it, the, the the exhibit, because it's something different. Even Fei Jai the other day, he gave us an idea. We're talking about it. We're all planning different stuff. And he's like, let's make it look like Jurassic Park. And I think that would be amazing because now you're not just coming in to look at a bunch of tanks. You, you're looking at a theme because these fish are prehistoric. Yeah. So what do you want to call it? Jurassic fish? That's one thing. Jurassic have, fish park. <laughs> that, we got to come up with a name. I thought about like something like with our name involved, like predatory fin stinger biology, apostrophe S, aquatic kingdom, something that it's the two of us combined. Okay. You know, uh, and if you have any ideas there, we'll like to hear as well. But um, we actually came up with a GoFund page finally for the exhibit. Um, I think that the process is going to be costly, but it's not impossible. I don't know how fast we're going to be able to do it, but hopefully soon enough, right? It's just a lot more cost than just buying the tanks. We have a lot of the tanks ready. I actually had somebody come here. What was it? Thursday that they came by? Wednesday? No, today's yesterday. Thursday. Yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Um, to give us a quote on putting the 12,000 gallon back together. So that one is going to be salt water. We want to set that up for salt water, but I think to set that one up is going to be higher than what we paid before because we cut that tank all in different cuts. It 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 depends. Um, 
It's gonna they, be harder they to ultimately put it have. They just ultimately have to join it back together. Ooh, so disrespectful. Well, no, sh she's supposed to call me when the thanks done draining. Is done draining? Okay, I'll be right there. All right, guys, I'll be right back because I'm always running water changes during the live. Just give me two seconds. All right, right. hold that thought, and we'll answer that. Last New York City, I finally got the shirt you guys gave me. I so love it. I've been wearing it every day. Oh, man, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, but definitely, John, why don't, why don't we put the pictures on the screen before Fajai comes in? Yeah, yeah, ready? All right, guys, let me know what you think. Ready? So this is the 12,000-gallon, 35-foot long saltwater tank. So that's going to be for sharks, tarpon, eels, grouper, pretty much like what we had in Florida, but almost three times bigger. Because this one was going to be 12,000 gallons. The next one, so this is the layout, right? The 35 gallon, the 35 feet long is by the wall, by the windows actually in the, in the beginning of the building. And then on the back wall, which I always talk about building a massive, massive tank in there, that back wall, we are leaning more towards two tanks, a 20 footer and a 40 footer, so we can leave space for a filter room to filter all these tanks. Now, the 20 footer would be more for like arowanas, uh, lynx, catfish, you know, fish that does not get as big, but still big enough to go in a big tank. The 40 footer is going to be for the arapaimas, the really giant monster fish. Like we want alligator gars, piraibas, perun sharks, all of it are going to go in the 40 uh, foot tank. And then we have our big tanks that we have here, the acrylic ones. We have the 19 foot right there by the wall and the other three will be on the other wall. Now, in the middle, we're trying to figure out what we're going to build at. Either we build a pond, you know, for like Sheila and all the fly river turtles or uh, paddlefish and sturgeon. Or I was trying to come up with a plan where we build the pond on the bottom and tanks on top. So on these tanks, we can come up with like, enclo not enclosures, but like aquascape tanks. You know, we can do one for archer fish. We can do one for uh, electric lungfish, like stuff that we can teach you can you can move to the next one it's teach and educate on different species we just don't know which route we're going to take yet we kind of just have the bases going no you can see Fajai's face <laughs> uh this one is the salt water from the front i like the the people in it you see okay. it can you see it or no yeah oh, i see it so disrespectful oh, it was that one john it's your own phone um She's killing the, 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 the live, bro. This woman. Never stop calling. You want to call on this one? No, just text her saying we're doing a live. And that phone is, is being used. Okay, the next one. I'm very excited for this tank. This one is the one that I'm, like, really looking forward to. This is going to be the 40-foot 40, the 40 monster tank. So we're debating on making them out of uh, shipping containers. I don't know if you guys have seen. We have the the... People make them out of pool. Like, they take a big shipping container and make a pool out of it. So we're talking to different companies right now to see if we can do the same thing at with the acrylic panels like that. I think that's going to look amazing. And it's a lot for me, that's a lot better than the fiberglass tank because we can literally drop it in place and set it up. And if we ever move, like, if this does really well and we ever move, oh, now we cover Fajai's face. Uh. <laughs> That's fine, right there. Whose face did I cover? There's you cover mine because I don't. Can one you shrink talking. it and just stick it in between us? I could. Yeah, that sounds people are so weird, bro. <laughs> shrink it and stick it in between. Okay, right there. That's okay, perfect. so, so the idea is to have that done for kids, and not only kids, but everybody to come here and be able to enjoy. I think we can build something that it's going to be unique. Yeah. Well, okay, look. Look at Fiji. I like to hold back, right, and not let all the info out, but I guess you already told them about the, the We already theme. told them everything. Yeah, you already told them about the style of well, the Well, if tank. we want them to help, they need to know what of we're course. planning on. But, I mean, I think they know us, and they know me, how particular I am about things, that whatever we do, it's going to be on point. You know, it might take time, but it's going to be on point. So, well, but that's why we need to people to know yes, what we're trying to do so correct. it doesn't take forever, because... Remember, uh, we're not going to last forever. We're going to talk about this. I know. So we need to get there sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Fei couldn't even get out of the chair to come to the podcast. <laughs> so Fei we have to enjoy Fei If you guys want pictures with Fei we have to make this happen sooner than later. 
Let's actually take a second to uh, thank Derek Kirshner, Gifted One Predatory Fins membership. Um, oh, thank you, Derek. To a random YouTube viewer, thank you so much. And then Mike Argon, or Mick Argon, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Gifted Five Predatory Fins memberships. Oh, thank mm. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks yes. for helping the family grow. Man, we got to see those chicken nuggets on the screen. Chicken nuggets. Uh, Other people are probably like, what, what is a chicken nugget? I think so, people who aren't on the live wait, wait, wait. don't understand it. because yeah, they so what I'm talking it. about okay. now because we yeah. have a live going on on TikTok as well. Okay. A chicken nugget is everyone that became a member, they're able to use different emojis and on YouTube. So people, one of the emojis is Kevin eating a chicken nugget. And last podcast we did, last live we did, the whole screen was covered of, of Kevin eating chicken nuggets. So that's what this joke came about. And it's right now, look, everybody's posting chicken nuggets on it. <laughs> it became a meme, bro. Oh, my. All right. That's funny. You want to go I'll to take the it. Next picture? Yeah, let's go to the next picture. Um, so this is the 3,000 gallons that we have now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's going to look a little bit different, but the idea is to have that. We can save that tank for, like, rare fish, right? Whether, whether they're more for the, the super rare to find. That tank is big enough to hold decent sized animals that are one of a kind. So, so if you guys are wondering, this is the first time I'm seeing this as well. I think uh, John no, I put it on a text group yesterday. Oh, you did just you? Don't pay attention. Okay, yeah. yeah. When I go, I told you when I go home, I shut down. So this is like we have another three 15 foot tanks, 15 footer, right? 15 to 16. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty pretty much the plan of the next wall. They're going to be lined up side by side. With different themes, but we can still decide to put freshwater fish or saltwater fish. It really gonna depend on on how we're gonna set up the exhibit. Because right now, so far, we only have the the twelve thousand for saltwater, and I'm sure we're gonna need more. Because even our our partner supplier, there, last year he sent me a video of this giant octopus, red octopus, and he, I'm sure they're they're we're gonna turn into food, you know. And he's like, "You guys want it? I'll ship it." I'm like, well, "We have no place for it," so. Having this done, we're definitely going to be able to get these cool animals, sometimes even save them from, from becoming food and um, be able to learn from them. Whoa. Kim, uh, Kim Gaither, I think I, I think I pronounced that correctly, hopefully. Gifted 10 predatory Kim. fins membership. Oh, thank you. Thank Kim, you so uh, much, Kim. They got the, sh the, the, the stingrays. stingrays. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 10. That's a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kim. But I think this vision is it's pretty much what we can do here. And ideally... With the, with the space that we have. Ideally, is if we grow this, we can go to another place and just build a whole place out of an exhibit. So like a real aquarium with fresh and salt water, but more of like stuff that you don't see every day. You know, like when we had uh, the Platinum Fly River Turtle or when we got offered an albino giant stingray or platinum uh, giant trevally stuff. We really want to start focusing on things that we can't find. And, you know, so when you guys come here, you're going to see something that you're not going to see anywhere else. Yeah. Ultimately, we want to stock or, or keep the type of animals, like he said, that you won't see anywhere else. Right. I mean, you might find it here and there, but you're not going to find this many all under one roof. Right. And even with the freshwater stuff, we're going to stay away from the, the common monsters. I think we're, we're trying to be as exotic as possible. Um, I mean, some things you can't deny, like an arapaima or, or a crazy alligator gar. But, or a tiger fish. Yes, but when possible, it's going to be something that you just won't see anywhere else. We're definitely going to focus on, because on, even for us, like, you know, we've seen every type of fish. Oh, that, that's a good one. I would zoom that all the way up, John, if you can. So, so far, we were even talking about a phagi, and phagi said that the filter room might not be big enough, so it's we have not. to figure it out. Yeah. The reason why it's right there is because if you move that big tank next, the 25,000 next to the 12,000, you're going to cover a big portion of it because that tank, the 12,000 is 10 feet wide. So if we put that filter room in the middle, we're not going to have, so we're going to have to figure out where we're going to put that. Well, the 12,000 is probably not even going to fit in that space. No, it fits. It does? Yeah. To the door? Yeah. What about the saltwater tank? That's, no, so that's not that going to get out. Okay, so... If we take that out, that kind of remember we we were trying to lay out yeah, but, a look for the entrance too. Yeah, but yeah. there's no. This is it. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere else to go. And that's ten foot wide. That's ten foot wide. So, so we have a lot of giant tanks. 
Um, and, uh, well, the other ones are going to be eight feet wide, the, but the saltwater one is yeah, 10. But remember, we have to leave space behind the wall. It mm -hmm. can't go up against the wall. Same thing with the 12,000. It can't go up the, against the windows because we need access uh, yeah. from behind as well. So there, there may be a little bit of overlap, but um, this is just a plan. Yeah. We might have to move stuff around, but what is at the end is going to be something similar to this, whether they move, we move the, the tanks around, but uh, that's the idea. A smaller tank for, for not super giant fish and then a monster tank for like big fish. As you can see, there's an air pyramid and alligator guy in there. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is there and we're working towards it. We still got to figure out the layout and, and, you know, how, which direction we're going to take, but the plan is in motion. That's for sure. I'm going to throw the, uh, the GoFund. Yeah, I mean, we we discuss about this. We don't want to just take stuff or or have people donate stuff without giving something back. So when you go to the GoFund page, there's different perks that you get with different donations. So that will be up if you guys want to go check it out and read it and see what you think. <clears throat> Let's see. I would drive to to New York just to see that. I believe so. I think this this one's a Terrence Borner. Borner. I think um this you know will be a lot crazier than what we had in Florida. It would definitely be a place where a fish lover would enjoy um, spending time and in, in looking into all these animals. Uh, we might even have to have a, a time slot, right? Because, or, because if too many people come here at the same time, oh yeah, it's not gonna it, work. It's, it's not gonna be a free for all. It's you have to book appointment times. Yeah. Jacob, when you guys have the Tiger Shovel Nose Akara Hybrid, uh, I believe we have that on the stock right now. Maria. Philomonoff, May I hope I said your name right. Can there be an option to either sponsor a fish of dollar or to purchase the right to name a certain fish? Oh, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. We can come up with that. Yeah. I think that, uh, like, ideas like that would be amazing, you know, because then you can say, hey, I'm donating this money. I would like to purchase a fish or I'm donating this money. I like to have that fish be named after the name I choose. Um, yeah, so depending on what the fish is. Uh, if it's a fish that you actually want to outright purchase and donate to us and name it, or it's a particular fish that we have on display that you want to contribute towards um, the maintenance and keeping of the fish, wow. right? Uh, and then in return, there's benefits like either naming the fish or, or other things associated to that particular animal. Yeah. I think it's going to be insane, honestly, with the, with the animals and stuff that we can rescue and uh, buy it, import. Um, and I, I really hope we can make this a one of a kind. O one DK, I would fly from Denmark if I was allowed in America, but looking forward to see it coming live. Well, hopefully, you know, a good thing is we're gonna be filming the whole process. So we're gonna be filming the before, the after. We're gonna be filming we will even wanna have a, a camera filming the exhibit like twenty four seven. You know, for you guys to just click and watch. So even though you're across the world, you're still gonna be able to enjoy these animals um, online. Sponsor a fish sounds like a good idea. What's the timeline for this job? Well, it all comes down to money, right? Um, we were debating, I think, to have that side fully done, fully ready with everything, equipment, animals, uh, tanks, the whole place done. We're probably looking at what two hundred grand. I think more. You think so? Mm -hmm. I mean, we already have some of the tanks, but we still need to. There's, yeah, but I th I think um, we're gonna just keep adding tank by tank, exhibit by exhibit, and if we're already allowed to be open, I think we'll start opening the doors, but while still like. Developing the exhibit. What do you think about that? Because if we were to wait until every single thing is done to perfection, that will probably take a lot longer, right? But tank by tank, and then um, 
you know. Yeah, but then at the same time, we can't really if we can't set up one tank and charge people. To no, it in. won't be a full emission price. It it would it would it would be accordingly, right? So people who want to come see already, I think people would be excited to see, even if it's just one tank, right? Yeah. So just by stages. That's all. Because yeah, definitely right. we have to to get the big tanks ready first in order to be able to set up the smaller tanks because once those are in place, there's yeah. no more moving up. Because we that. can't do the smaller ones. We have to do the big one first, get that into the position, and then the smaller tanks come around. Because if we put the smaller in ones first, we won't be able to get the big tank when it's ready. And that big tank might take two months, three months to build. We don't know yet. Yeah. Right. Granted, we pay today in full for that tank. I would say at minimum it's going to take them a month to build it, right? If it's fast, yep. and and we're building it in Asia, so there's a transportation time which is about a month on the ocean, right? And then getting it out of the ports. So just well, right if there, we, if we import, yeah, if, if we, we go import, that route, yeah. that's still minimum two and a half months. If we go building it domestically, right? Um, look, our electrical took three months, mm -hmm. almost, right? Uh, so same thing. These guys may not come every single day working on it because we're not their only job. If they show up once or twice, three times a week, you know, stage by stage, step by step, it's still going to take time. And then we, we're we also willing to take help. So, like, if you know how to – wait, can yeah, electricians you, help us? Or yeah, if, if there's ways that – there's different ways of contributing, plumbers, electricians, whatever, if they want to donate their time to help us. But do they have to be, like, from here, from New York? How does that work? It depends. Um, maybe not, right? If it's simple work. Okay. So we'll see. But that's Thomas, one of the... Sorry. sorry, go ahead, John. Thomas, thank you so much for the membership. Uh, we got another member, Thomas uh, Ridfield. I don't know how to pronounce it, but welcome. Ridfield, welcome to the Monster family. From Toes Arowana, any black Arowanas coming soon? We actually have some right now. How yeah, many do you have? We, not many left. We only have five left. They're about like uh, 11 to 12 inches. It's, I think it's on the website already. You guys can check it out there. All right. Let's see here. Where is your golden goonch catfish from? Is it wild? What do you think, Fijai? Yes, it is wild. Okay. John, you got any good questions oh. there? Well, Shannon. Said, Rod, Rod, please help. My Dorado catfish has a blow stomach it keeps burping uh burping air out of its belly what's the best treatment you would recommend Oof. that's a tough one i mean uh if this it's a bigger catfish then you could definitely try using the needle method method you know but uh you have to really know where to poke um if not for the people done well raise, lower the water level raise up the temperature the problem is we have to understand why it's getting bloated is it sucking in air is it having a bacterial infection that's producing gas in the stomach, right? So if it's a bacterial infection that's causing it, obviously, uh, I would clean up your tank and put antibiotics. Um, if the fish is constantly coming up and gulping gulps of air, <laughs> then it's just a problematic fish. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a tough fix. Um, but I wanted to jump back. Uh, Shannon, she, she, uh, she mentioned... Uh, she she put up a couple of comments, something about Black Diamond Rays. Um, I think it was asking if we have any females. At the moment, we don't have any females. They're all males, unfortunately. But the next time we get more in, I'll let you know, or you just uh, keep looking on the website. But when you're ready for a pair, just let me know. We'll set something aside for you. <clears throat> Could you ever see blue Oscars in stock? I honestly believe that these are injected. Not naturally blue. Yeah, I've actually never even seen that one yet. I've but seen we've seen picture. the arowanas, right? The 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 strawberry ones or the yeah, blueberry, blueberry ones. But I've seen picture of those blue Oscars, and they it, look it, uh, injected. It either injected or they're just soaking them in dye, <laughs> and then it just stains their skin. Um, XXL shirts in here. What's going I'm on? Not with sure. That? A bunch of boxes came in. Did you guys? Did we order? Those it? were uh, the tubes for the posters. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I heard you and Wei talking about it last time, like how many to make or something. Right? Yeah, I don't. And maybe they're in production. They're probably in production right now. I say probably another week. We got another uh, another member joined, um, Giovanni Carciara. Carciara. So how many members are we at now? Because I, I hate to say it, I'm not a member. 
<laughs> so I can't see anything. Look, there's a good comment here. Adrian Saveri. Uh, my main concern right now is that Brian Barczyk is going under chemo and hope you guys can help him. So I, I actually told John this, you know, help Brian. Brian needs all the help he can. You know, if you have if you have to do, help somebody or donate somebody, help Brian. He definitely can use all the help he, um, he needs right now. So we even thought about um, helping him, and I reach out to him many times. We talk. If he needs anything, we're here for him. I just don't want to um, start something in his behalf um, unless he approves. So I'm sure there's other people doing it. I'm sure he's got his own thing going on, and we can share his uh, GoFund. He has a GoFund, John, already done? I believe so. Yeah, we can put it on the chat. But like I said, he definitely – Brian's a great guy. He took all the time in the world when we were there, late night, helping us, you know, just talking. and Really nice guy. It's the first time he actually met Kevin, right? Yeah. Well, we met when he uh, oh, yeah, came, yeah. came by, but that but was the first time. Not like trying to push us out and, you know, it's too late, I'm going home. Like He was like, no, 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 let's go more and more and more, you know. So Brian really is what he proceed, pro projects to be on camera. That's how he is 24-7. Great guy. It sucks that he's going through that, but, you know, like I told him, I said, don't lose hope. Just keep, keep fighting for it because okay. miracles do happen. I'm going to try to look up his GoFundMe right now so I could put it in the description as well. Um, but in the meantime, let me see if I can find it. All right. Meanwhile, what are we going to um, – oh, somebody asked if we got the, the 40 box shipment. Oh. You want to tell them what happened? It got deli we told the story last week already. Well, maybe some people are not watching. It it basically got held up at the airport um, during an inspection. The Wait, ins in Asia, in Asia, yeah, in Asia, uh, when they were exporting it, and um, they just randomly picked a box to 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 search, and it was the box of Jardinis. So, what happened? Um, the box got seized because the person didn't know what fish it was and thought it was an Asian arowana, and there was no CITES paperwork, so they held up the whole shipment to try to sort things out. By the time they sorted things out or trying to sort things out, we missed the flight. So um, that was that, and now we're just trying to rebook the shipment to come, and it should be come. It was supposed to come again this past week, but there was no flight space, so we're going for next week. So basically, we missed our entire shipment because of one fish that they confused with Asian Mm-hmm. Correct. That's crazy. Kyle Shetter. Shetter. I hope I said that right. Thanks to Rod and Kevin. The two of you make this hobby so much better. Quality fish for sale. The best content on the internet. And you care about your fans. Thank you. It's a great compliment. Um. I think the reason why we care about our fans the most is because I never really felt like I had a fish store. You know, I, I know we have to sell to make money to pay the bills, but that's not what I what I want yeah. for my life. The real difference here, and I think it shows, is that we're in this more as a hobby than as a business. Mm -hmm. We right? enjoy, it, yeah. Um, and in a way, that makes us bad business people. Yes. It okay. Sucks. Because every nice fish we come across, oh, let's keep this one, let's this one. So everything's running as a hobby. And we're importing fish as a hobby. When we're looking at that list every week, you know, it's we're still like, oh, man, we need to get this. Oh, man, should we get that? And it's not because, oh, hey, you know what? This fish makes the most money. That fish makes, no. It's we're getting it because we like it, you know. And um, <laughs> it's tough because a lot of times we this whole place is sell. just like my fish garage just like times a thousand that's yep. what it is basically yeah everybody's like do you have a fish tank at home i'm like no everything's here um i'm not sure if we read this before okay. or not, but uh nexus donated ten dollars thank you so much um, thank you nessa thank you um, will you be getting any seven to eight inches or larger flag tails or mono bass flag tails or mono so okay just sorry sorry but okay. just just to 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 answer the question, it's very hard to bring in larger fish. Okay, eight to nine inch, you said, right? Mm -hmm. So eight to nine inch fish, you're probably gonna put six to eight on a box. The freight is gonna cost so much that the price of that fish is gonna be a lot higher, and it's not gonna sell. So that's why majority of people 
bring in smaller fish. Um, if it's something rare or something different, then we're willing to pay for the, the end. It was like, tomorrow, we have an unboxing that we're going to do tomorrow. Watch that next unboxing video, and you're going to understand why it's so hard to bring in larger fish. Because some of these were one per box. So that box is costing about $300 just for one fish. So that puts $300 more on top of that fish. So that's why it's so hard for anybody in, in the hobby to do that. Unless you're putting more fish per box, that's why everybody prefers to import tiny little stuff and grow them out. Because it gets very costly. Not only does it get costly, but also when we turn around and ship it out, also the risks are higher when it's a big fish. So there's risk coming in and there's risk going out. So um, unless the markups make sense in that regards, it, it's very hard for us to do because it's almost guaranteeing that we take a loss, right? So let's say if we bring in two animals, right, and we lose one, even selling the one that's made it will not cover the loss of the first one if we're not getting the right margins, which is why it's very tough to do. It's not that we can't do it, um, but if, if, if it's something that you really, really need and say, hey, my whole tank, everything is that size, I can't put in a three-inch fish, well, you know, you can call us and say, hey, I do need that size, and we'll give you a price on what it would cost. Like, we have zoos all the time that asking us, oh, can you yeah. import us this, can you import us that? It's just larger fish cost well, more money. Well, a couple of years ago, we had somebody wanting a, a larger arapaimas, right? Like three or four foot arapaimas. Mm -hmm. And we called Peru and we coded the thing out. And by the time we coded to the zoo, they were like, holy cow, you know? Um, but just a, f no, no, it wasn't. It was somewhere else. They wanted a 10 foot arapaima, remember? We And we, we had to call Asia also. And the number, it was like 20 grand. It? it was like 20 grand, wasn't it? It was like Dubai. Oh, it was Dubai, yes. Dubai, somewhere, somewhere in Dubai, want, they were starting a new exhibit and they wanted the big uh, Arab Hymas and stuff. But it, they just don't understand, you know. <laughs> Luxie's six-pack, welcome to Monster Fan. Got another member over here. Luxie's, thank you. So how do you guys think is the best way to proceed with this? What do you think, Fijay? Oh, you, I'm, talking about, oh. I'm talking about asking them. You and John at the same time, like, you guys have been here. You've seen what we're going through. You know, what's the best way for us to... I can't wait to have it all ready and just see kids come in. Whether they're doing school field trips or special need kids, you know, or um, adults as well. But, like, my main goal is for the future generation. To get them in a hobby, get them understand and respect these animals, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons why, for example, when I was a kid, I never threw trash on the floor or... Because I learned from a young age, you know, like one time I was actually watching a documentary about if you spit out your gum, you're actually killing birds because they'll go and eat it and then they get choked and die. Yeah. And since that day, I never spit a gum, you know, spat is the right word? Spat? I think so. I think so. I never spatted, spitted. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lisa's not here from, to help me. Uh, but I learned not to do that, you know. So I think it's very important, especially for the future generations to, to understand and learn about what's so, what's so important about keeping our waters clean. I have two arapaimas that are 20 inches long after just three months from five inches. They, they get big fast. Yeah. If, if they're kept in good conditions and well-fed, uh, any animal can grow fast. Yeah, I think arapaimas... And red tail, in my opinion, are the two fastest growing fish in growth rate. Uh, EJ Regal, Syracuse, New York, is opening an aquarium, and they're going to need fish for certain. Okay. Well, we could reach out to them, or if you know some somebody there, you can always, you know, refer them to us. Either way, that would work. Let me see, Drew. Sean, what's up, dog? <laughs> Stumpy, 1993. What's up, Rod and Kevin? What's up, buddy? What's up? Dave, the fish dude. Uh, Rod, how's Lisa and the new baby doing? Everybody's doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, the new baby was born on the 4th at 2 in the morning. It was a very easy delivery. Uh, I did great. did great. Did they induce it or do we just wait it and no, you know, they, they induced it and like it was scary because like they they kind of let lay her flat 
And then she called me. This time I stay awake with Ryan. I fell asleep. Mm-hmm. She called me. And she's like, hey, guy, can you call the nurse? And when I got up, Lisa was, she's already pale. But she was, like, extra pale. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, shit, something's not right. So I pressed the button. She came. and said, hey, something's wrong. Look at her. Dude, the nurse turned around. <laughs> There's, like, 15 nurses in the room. So I got a little worried because why all those people are here, you know? Yeah. All they did was bring her back up and her blood pressure, whatever, just she came back to normal. That's crazy, right? She was laying she, down. She was too laid flat. Yeah, she was laying flat, and then she became very pale and dizzy. Okay. Her, her, blood, blood, her blood, blood pressure was, was too low? Yeah, and then they just inclined her a little bit, and boom, she was good. So it was like, what, the medication or the epidural? I think or? it was the epidural, yeah. Mm. But, dude... And I'll tell you something crazy. I wasn't going to say anything. I'll tell you something really crazy. After the delivery, mm-hmm. you know I don't lie about stuff like this. After the delivery, the nurses were, oh, congratulations. And they're leaving the room. And, bro, I kid you not. I saw a white, like, not smoke, like a white figure. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> swear, bro, walk out of the room. Like, yeah. after the nurses. And I was like, what the hell, you know? And then... Not even like maybe two minutes later, stuff start falling off like off the shelves on the room, and okay. the nurse was like, "What the hell? What is this?" Mm-hmm. And Lisa's like, "Oh, my husband saw a ghost." I'm like, "Oh, shut up! Like, why are you gonna tell her?" Daniel, thank you for the two dollars. Thank you for the donation. Uh, the Godfathers of the Fish, Carp Team nine ninety three zero zero. Okay, that's pretty cool. Actually, I want to do a T-shirt that says "The Rod Father" and have me on top of an aeropilot. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Stone. Well, uh, thanks to a heart attack, I now have time to catch up on all the streams and the vids. Absolutely love your YouTube. Well, Luke, we hope you're doing well, recovering yes. well. Luke is uh, my Thank son's you name. Supporting. Luke. Well, we never want to thank anything to a heart attack. No, of course. <laughs> He's forced at home, stay at home and rest. So we're keeping him entertained while it's Project happening. Lime Red. Fajai needs to upload on his channel more often. Watching all <laughs> vids three years ago. <laughs> well, at least they're still watching the videos from three years ago. So that's another thing too. Like the sooner we can be ready and done <coughs> and we can start hiring more people and everything's up and running. We really want to focus like all our time through videos. Whether it's here at the shop, whether it's at the exhibit, whether it's in the back, whether it's traveling, we really want to open up our time for that. Okay. Well, let me let me explain to people a little bit. Also, it's not just that I'm just ignoring my channel. Um, I don't. It's plain and simple. I don't have the animals that I used to have, right? Um, and nothing's giving birth right now because a lot of my focus is not on breeding the stingrays the focus is on getting this business up and running getting the exhibits going um so that's that's really where my focus is at to to breed the stingrays it takes a lot of time and daily dedication to get the animals fed right conditioned right and keep them on point so that they do breed but if there's other content that you guys are happy to see on my channel you know where i discuss different (coughs) topics then i'll be more than happy to make those videos but in terms of stingray itself there's there's not much to show uh but i'd be happy to talk about things well i always right? told you you should do videos teaching educating how to care how to treat because your knowledge mm-hmm. becomes you know it's from like 50 years ago so your knowledge is very um desired okay you know i think that you could teach and help save <laughs> a lot of fish sean best video from kevin back in the day was uh those those geos, the albino geos. Yeah, when I first got it, right? That one tank, I'm like, oh my God, they were so amazing. And they were big size too. Pranav Kotru said, sponsor a fish and put up a plaque next to the tank that mentioned their name. That was an idea that we had. We even put that on the goal fund. Like, depending on the value of your uh, donation, you get a plaque with your name next to a tank or we're going to find places through the exhibit to do it, which I think would be pretty cool. Because it's something, we're giving something back in return. The fish dude said, the best day of my life was when my twins were born. Truly amazing experience. It is. It is. And I'm, and I'm sure if AJ would, would agree with me. Um, it is very uh, interesting the way life happens. But the damn umbilical cord, bro. That thing looks like it's from an alien movie. <laughs> like, 
I don't know how. Did you cut it? I cut it. Did it squirt? <laughs> no, but thank God, because I would have squirted the like, tears out of my eye. But, dude, it, it's it's like plastic. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure it doesn't break, of course. That's the lifeline to the baby. It's like, know? how can uh, the body build that material inside of it? Attached to a placenta that looks like, ah, I don't mm -hmm. even know what. And people, do you know people eat that? No, I didn't. Yeah, I mean, let's not even talk about that. Bro, I just checked the GoFundMe after five minutes and we raised over a thousand dollars already. No, Swear wow. Swear to God. Thank you, thank you guys. So a thousand seventy-one dollars raised. That's what? unbelievable. If we go this route, we <laughs> might be able to build this. Well, you know, it was decent. Look, five donations got us that. So it, each donation averaged around two hundred bucks. So thank you, thank you guys. But that's why we can't. We have to make it happen. Giovanni, holy cow, man. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you very Giovanni, much. Giovanni, thanks, brother. $1,001. That's unbelievable. Well, hopefully Giovanni can come here and uh, enjoy the, uh, their uh, tour. We actually did it on the $1,000 donation. You got a, a tour with you and I, a private tour. You're pimping me already? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a private tour. You get a, uh, a T-shirt, a hat. What else, John? Let's see. Let's pull it up. Scalia Whiskey. The XLs are coming. No, we have XL in stock. The two XLs are coming. I promise. I promise. Um, let me pull up the description. If I can find it. There we go. Okay. So, Giovanni, what you'll be getting a private tour with Rod and Kevin. A T-shirt, a hat, poster signed by the entire Predatory Fins crew. You're going to get your name on a plaque in the exhibit for life. So it's going to stay there in the exhibit. Your name will be on the plaque. Um, thank you so much. You'll be in an intro on one of our YouTube videos. So we'll reach out to you, and uh, you could be in one of our YouTube videos. 10% off all future Predatory Fins orders for life. Free exhibit passes for life. And 50% off all guest passes. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, I thought you remember when I said 10% yeah. off for life. Remember when I said Fiji guy's going to make a face? Yep. His eye just went. <laughs> well, that's that's all, it. We want to give back. Friend. So oh. if he, so if he orders a $3,000 Datanoid. He already got his money back. Exactly. That's it. <clears throat> and it's for life. So if he buys more fish, he's actually going to get more money than he, he donated. Yes. That's the, goal. that's the goal of helping us in the beginning. Okay. <laughs> Kevin's dying inside. Tank. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, Tank, he's physically not here, but spiritually. I know. Dude, see, it sounds crazy, bro. I was here the other night. I felt like a bump on my leg. Mm -hmm. and I thought it was Bella. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. I turn around, there's nothing. Yeah. I'm dead serious. What do you think it is? I don't know. Tank. Heart palpitation? <laughs> 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 but, yeah, Tank was... Um, he got better, he got worse, he got better, he got worse. And then on the last seizure, he had, it was actually Kevin and I were here, 6 in the morning, he had a seizure so bad that um, he bit his cage, even though, I think at the time he started, he was outside of the cage. Okay. But he had it next to the cage. And, you know, going through the attack, he bit the cage so hard, he ripped his teeth off. So after seeing that, I decided to just not put him through it anymore. Um, it just wasn't fair to him. You know, I was keeping him alive for my benefit of having him. And um, it just wasn't wasn't right to keep him, you know, struggling like that. And I'll tell you what, though. He knew. And I'm, I'm pretty sure he was happy with the decision because he never lays outside like that. He lay in one spot and stayed. The vet actually came here. And he just sat on that spot. She gave him a, a, a shot to relax. And at that point, sugar came outside and start licking him in the ear, mm. and you could just hear him breathing very calmly. He, he, he could never do that. He was always twitching, always like, there was yeah. always something wrong. And then um, the second injection um, was the final one. And that little moment of, I, I went desperate for a little bit because I was like, oh, no, let me stop. But then I knew it was the best thing for him. We tried everything. It just wasn't fair, man. Those whole winter, am I lying? Yeah. Every single day this winter, Tank would poop and roll on it when he had a seizure. And then when I get here, everybody was already here dealing with the smell, dealing with all the problems. Tank is covered in crap. 
had to take him outside, give him a bath every single day, you know, and it's cold. It's not, it's not like this is Florida, you know? Mm-hmm. So him and I went through a lot. And, um, if I could take five years of my life to give it to him, I would. On a happier note, Charlie Stone, happy birthday. He wants a birthday shout out. Throw some nuggets in the chat. Our <laughs> boy, Charlie. Charlie, happy birthday, brother. He's also asking, do we have uh, kids' clothes? We have some from the old design, right? A few left. Yeah, but we're trying to come up. We're coming up with, like, a kids' design. So soon we'll be available. We're pretty much making our logo more kids-friendly for kids. Dude, I even thought about, like, what if we open a pair of toy fins for kids? Like, like the channel. And then mm-hmm. the girls and Ryan, you know, they can run it when he starts speaking better. Or speaking at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? That'll be that'll be good. Yeah, rest in peace, Tank. <laughs> Yo, look at the comment from Scali, bro. Read it. You read it. Where is it? Read it right here. <laughs> read it. Rod has heart. Kevin dead inside. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Because I'm here talking, but you show zero emotion. Kevin is really good at holding his emotions. Trust me. Yeah, it, it takes a lot to get a rise out of me. Putting my dog down was one of the hardest things I ever did, bro. Don't, don't even start, man. That that. There was a guy that commented on, on our Instagram post saying that our second child was Tank's death sentence. What? Me having my second child. Was oh, like, bro. No. You don't understand how bad I wanted to him be like, hey, come over here and say that to my face. Come over <laughs> here. I'll give you the, I'll pick you up. I'll send an Uber. But I was just like, man, you have no idea. I, I tried to. Be really cool about it. I'm like, you have no idea, bro. I said it to him. Just so you have an idea, I'll put you down before I put my dog down. Uh-huh. And that should say a lot already. Because I'll deal with the consequences of that. Maybe we're reading it wrong. Maybe he didn't mean it that way. Because I kind of said something similar, right? No, he, he said it just like that. He said yeah. uh, uh, dogs with, with uh, uh, epilepsy can be saved. He had no idea what. What oh yeah, no. Then, he just yeah, he just yeah. coming. You don't stuff. know what we went through to Everyone. get him back to where he was, and you know it's the quality of life that he was living. If you saw that on a day to day basis, what we saw, I think it was cruel that we let it go on that long. Honestly, yes. Now that I think about, yes. Big dreams, small wallet. <laughs> That's a good name. We've seen it when Rod's giving away discounts. So maybe that's what they're talking about, where I have a good heart and you're dead inside because I'm the one giving them this. <laughs> He's always giving, okay? So, well, you do too. You do well, too. Yeah, when 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 the time is right. But it's like it's like you know how you say I love you. You're always like I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. When I say it, it's like holy shit, it's gold. <laughs> but I always say it to people that, of course, deserve it. Oscar Mondena, Mon Mondonedo. I remember asking Rod, "Is Kevin okay?" Why? Because you're so serious all the time. <laughs> you know, well, it's also, like we said, I'm tired. With all the stuff that we're dealing with, and it's the end of the day, time to go home, water changes, you know, it's just, this job never ends. No. It never ends. Nope. I think Rod knows now not to call me when we go home, unless it's something important. No, we don't I, talk. I don't answer. We don't talk. We used to talk, like, hours after we got home, but now it's like, no. Nope. It's tough even for me, because I come home, and Ryan's like, Da 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 da. He just wants to play. So yeah. It's like if we spend a whole night on the phone, you just you just waste your time away. I mean, will we get more stuff done? And but still, I mean, it's just not enough time in a day. We've said that many many times. And as our kids get older, they need some of our time at home too. I mean, you're Ryan just wants play time now, but the girls need help with their homework. And then I'm like, geez, I haven't looked at stuff like this for over thirty years. I got to refresh myself before I can help them. Look, zero one DK. Mm-hmm. I mean, the man has raised two girls. Think about how much emotions he sees every day. Talking about you, it's not even coming. You got three girls in the house. Yes, it's coming because because they're they're Tiffany is now entering teenagers, right? So the real real headaches are gonna come soon. Um, I it just look one day. I might not even be here because I killed somebody. <laughs> or actually, he killed him for me. I, yeah, and I so he say, may not be here. I was going to say, I'll well, be I'm here. surprised you saying that. 
Yeah. <clears throat> I, I can't hold, like, like I to me, I can hold. You can say whatever you want to say. You can do whatever you want to do. doesn't bother me. But to, like, family, and I consider animals as family, friends, that that doesn't fly with me. That's the only time I, I go beyond myself. But I'm very, like, like, I used to discuss with friends that, like, if you're walking somewhere and your girl is in front of you mm-hmm. and somebody hits on her, I can't get mad because mm-hmm. I can't expect somebody to know that that's my wife or my woman, right? Mm-hmm. So totally understandable. But if we're holding hands or side by side and, you know, somebody, mm-hmm. then I'll break your teeth <laughs> because now you're disrespecting me, right? <coughs> yeah. Predatory fins, did you ever do any MMA fighting? On black belt jiu-jitsu, uh, transparent belt and uh, karate. Um, did you just say transparent belt? <laughs> I was being serious here. Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot with samurai. Right? What did you learn? Uh, what How to keep stingrays alive. Oh. <laughs> no, but in reality, I... I uh, Street fighting was my uh, my my jam. Have you ever have you ever fought someone? <sighs> Maybe once or twice. Did you win? I think so. Ah, chicken nugget, chicken nugget. <laughs> there you go. Fighting's not a good thing. I actually got lucky one time. I was a bouncer and I <clears throat> I was trying to break out a fight, and the dude that I was trying to help tried to stab me. This is a place in, in Florida, actually. Went through my shirt. So I pushed him, and he fell, and I picked him up, and I opened the front door with his face. You know, the doors that swing? Mm-hmm. And the moment I push him, he just <laughs> lay there. And my manager pulled me back inside, and next you know, I see cops and ambulance and fire department. I'm like, oh, man, I killed this motherfucker. So then um, the cop had me fill up a report. And what happened? So I'm sitting there. Writing, you know, the report, and he's he's already awoken. It's blood everywhere. It's just moving side to side like an animal. And uh, the cop told me, he's like, hey, man, look, you got lucky. Because if he died, you'd be in jail for life. <laughs> Seriously. And he was, he was my friend. The cop was my friend. Mm-hmm. But so that happened. And then years later, this is the, the kick out of it. Years later, I'm working somewhere else. I was a bartender somewhere else. My first day, we go out to have a drink with all the employees. And I'm sitting there, and I hear, yo, where's my effing chain? Mm-hmm. And when I look up, it's him. Look, when he passed out, somebody robbed his chain. They robbed his gold grill, okay. you know, and he just remembers me. Mm-hmm. So he's like, where's my chain? And I'm like, look, bro, I never had your stuff, and, and I don't have it now. And he goes, he pulled out a stack of money like this. Mm-hmm. He's like, why don't you do something now and take it like you did it before? Uh-huh. And Dude, the whole place was full, right? <laughs> so I got up. And I say, hey, man, look, I told you I don't have it. I never had it. But you do what you need to do. He goes, come on, be a tough man now and do it mm-hmm. like you did it to me before. Mm-hmm. And he lifts it up. He's got a gun. His whole crew, everybody had a mm-hmm. gun. Mm-hmm. And I said, bro, look, I told you once. I'm going to tell you again. I don't have it. I would never have it. I don't need your money. Mm-hmm. But you know how bad I just wanted to punch him and throw that throw that th- mm-hmm. shit up in the air? And uh, I never forgot that. So I could have got killed for something that he started years ago. Yeah. You know, so you got to be very, very careful. I That's actually like, know I, someone I, that here in New York, they push a guy out that was like harassing woman, and he tr- the guy the dude tripping on his own feet, and he hit his his face on a rear mirror of a car, broke his neck, and the security guard had to go to jail for life. So anything can happen, man. <clears throat> you notice that our lives always go in different directions. <laughs> well, you have so many life stories. That's why it goes. No, nah, it literally does just. I think uh, uh, you live life on the edge. I think John always posts like, um, "Mister, your secrets of the acquiring hobby." <laughs> That's the last thing we talk about. <laughs> we'll take one more question here because we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna do the, the members live in a, in a minute. All right. So you pick the question, John. All right. Let's see. Um. What plecos can I keep with the big American uh, chiclid? Did I say that right? Cichlid. Cichlid. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that. What plecos can I keep with a big American cichlid and a 180 other than a common pleco? I think any larger size 
Pleco should be fine, right? South American cichlids. I, I don't think they really bother Plecos, but if they're too small, then they might just try to eat it because they think it's food. But anything bigger, I think, will be fine. All right, we're going to wrap that up there. Thank you guys so much. Wait, 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 wait. Before we start, oh. check this out. Cody Raid, will you do an all-black tank? What did you show me today? What did I show you? Come on, bro. Black, black, remember? I showed you something yes, today? Yes, on your phone. On my phone. A I fish, don't remember. a black fish. Oh, Oh, is that what he means? All black tank? I thought he meant black like the whole thing is well, black. We oh, he's talking, about mel he's talking about black fish, like Mel melanistic. Yes. So tell me which, what you saw today. Um, it was a melanistic Giardini, but I passed on it. Because it's so expensive, I don't have a place for it. So it's we not have to just get that. the exhibit ready. It's not just that. Um, I don't know if the so how legit the source was. And you know how like they're... They're doing the blueberries and the strawberries. What if, you know, they did something here just to make it black? You know what I mean? Yeah, but. Um, so I didn't trust the source. And if it's, if it's something I don't trust the source, yeah, I won't even entertain it. But if it was a trustful source. If it was a trustful source, then I would have entertained it, yes. So, guys, we got to get the exhibit ready. Please feel free to reach out if you have any ideas on how we can get that faster or how you want to be a part of it. Our email is on the screen, I think. Right, John? We have put them many times before and uh we'll see you next thursday um right now if you're a member we're gonna stay here for a little bit longer for the members live and uh some really cool fish coming in tomorrow so stay tuned for that as well mountaintop puffer one more he's looking to get a group of deboise puffers to grow out okay well we, we something we can try to get they don't come around that often it's a hard puffer to get but they they do turn up once in a while yeah, like one know. or two here and there Okay, then I'm going to go check on the water change. Right, so guys. we're ending this one and just starting a new one, right? Yeah. That's okay. All right, take care, guys.